Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. What a difference a week makes, huh? Look at this weather. Last week, I was bringing this message to you walking through the snow. I think it was just above 20 degrees, maybe. And now it's in the 40s. It's sunny out. I'm wearing my brand new sneakers that I got to wear at the gym. That's closed. Anyway, spring always gives me hope that no matter how frigid or lifeless the world seems to get, God is still at work to bring life. I've been thinking a lot today about Christian unity. So let me read for you Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 to 16. Paul says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. As I've followed the world's response right now to our current crisis, it's only reaffirmed in my mind the truth that a crisis reveals our idols. It reveals the ugly parts that still remain in our hearts. And it's really saddened me recently to see how much division there is in the world over this, even among professed Christians. There's so many different ways to address the current circumstances, depending on your own risks, your own calling in life, even where you live in the world. But there's so many people who are adamant that their way to see it is the universal way to address the problem. And everyone else is causing problems, causing more harm. People who claim to be brothers and sisters are casting judgments on one another just for disagreeing over these things. I think it's time for us just to stop, stop for a moment, pause, and reevaluate our priorities. When so called public health or even American liberty becomes so much more important to us than our common bond in Christ, something's broken in our hearts. I think this season is a gift from God to address that brokenness that we might not have otherwise recognized was there. It reminds me of one of our brothers recently who found out he got cancer. And it was able to be treated very quickly. They found it early enough that it wasn't that big of a threat. But while they were testing and treating it, they found in the scans that he had a heart defect that was much more threatening to his life. Though the cancer is bad, it was actually a good thing that he got it so they could find the much more serious threat to his life. Likewise, coronavirus is certainly a threat to this world, but analyzing it, thinking about it, has revealed a greater threat to us. Our souls aren't very healthy. But praise God for bringing this moment into our lives to expose it and give us a chance to fix it. Christ's death and resurrection doesn't just give me the opportunity to go to heaven and get a new body that will never get sick and die. He actually died and rose and gave his spirit so that we would be unified with other men and women around the world, especially those who are close to us. He unified people to show the world how powerful he is. So the longer we're apart, it's natural to get a little chirpy with one another. I get it. If I have a season of busyness in my life and I'm not at home as much or don't have as many chances to talk deeply with my wife, we start to get more annoyed with one another. In the office here, Jake and I, if, if we don't check in weekly with one another, make sure we're on the same page, going the same direction, it's natural to start questioning the value of each other and our motives. And if the church isn't meeting, then we're tempted to think that other people aren't pursuing Jesus the right way. <sighs> we need to be together for our own good, for our witness, in fact. Our unity is a witness to the world of the power of the gospel. That's what Paul says just a chapter later in Ephesians 3 verse 10. He says the reason that we are unified in Christ is so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. 
Our unity is what shows the world how powerful Jesus is. We get to display, not just to the nations, but even to the angels watching, how mighty Christ's blood is to unify us. The longer the separation continues, the more we're gonna be tempted to see each other through our differences. So let's strive now with all of our might, pray with utter dependence upon God, and unite with one another in creative, unique ways to show the world that delighting in our unity in Christ is so much more satisfying than arguing over our differences. Jesus can overcome coronavirus. He can overcome our bitter, stubborn, selfish hearts that strive to exalt ourselves above others. Instead, let us strive to outdo one another in showing honor. I love you, Redemption City Church. I've been so encouraged by your love for one another in the past, and I'm eager to see how God unifies you and glorifies Jesus in the coming days in your unity. I'm praying soon that we'll all be hugging and singing praises to our King together soon.